Hi. Who have we got here? Uh, Ella. Vet nurse Liesel has brought her two-year-old bearded dragon into the clinic. Oh, yeah, bring him in every now and then. He gets a bit lonely at home by himself. Look at that face. Hmm? Yes, you are so creepy. Yes, you are. While Liesel may refer to her cold-blooded friend as a he, she actually has no idea whether her reptile is a boy or a girl. Hopefully I'm going to find out what sex is. I mean, I don't know if anyone here knows how to. It's not exactly as easy as it is with a dog or a cat, but if anyone can, Chris can. What's its name? This is the here Horatio Sampson Althea Tallulah Phineas. <laughs> it's hard to name when you don't know the sex. Uh, hang on, I'm going to get this down. Being called on to sex a bearded dragon isn't your everyday request. You can't just look for things hanging down. With a bearded dragon, what you're looking for are bulges. When you lift up the tail, if it's a male, you'll see two very subtle bulges just above the bottom. If it's a female, just one bulge. But quite often, it's really hard to tell. Oh! Take that. I have to. Oh, it just gets darker and worse as time goes on. I just can't believe she's gone two years without knowing the truth. Well, Liesl, I'd like you to meet Althea Tallulah. She's a girl. Oh, that was a little girl. <laughs> I'm actually really excited that it's a girl. You normally expect the it's a girl being shouted out to be at the time of birth. Well, now we know she's a girl. Chris, pack her up. Come on. Mm -hmm. oh. Of kiss worse. <laughs> we picked her up on Saturday from a breeder in Canberra. Um, brought her home the first day, she's very bouncy playing with everything, um, but then she's gone downhill from there. Nine week old Kiko is being admitted to the Bondi Referral Hospital SASH. The tiny Japanese Spitz puppy is suffering severe vomiting and diarrhea. Mark's been sleeping next to her at night time and I've been having Because we time thought off maybe work. distress was one of the problems because she would cry a lot at night. Worried owners Nicole and Mark have only had Kiko for five days. Hello, Kiko. Now, what's Hello. been going on with her? Brought her home on Sunday, she cried all night, but Mark slept next to her. Yep. She had three meals on Monday. Mm -hmm. um, she slept in the bathroom, but she was very distressed. She peed in her bed mm -hmm. and she still had diarrhea. Nicole and Mark are very devoted parents. Kiko is their first baby. Nicole's been keeping a diary of her. They've hired babysitters. They are really proud parents, but unfortunately now they're very worried parents because Kiko's got a big fight ahead of her. Dehydration can be a killer in a dog of her size. Basically, all the fluid's been sucked out of her body and been lost in her diarrhea and vomit. And if we don't treat that, it can cause her body basically to shut down. Hey, Tim, how are you going? Perfect day. She's oh. Meg. Too. Got Meg? Yeah. She's wet little darling. Yeah. <laughs> Meg is a very sick, depressed koala. Her Joey died just a week ago. Meg's four years old now. Um, last year she lost a Joey, and this year the same things happened. Sometime through the night, it gets out of the pouch, whether she throws it out of the pouch or it's exploring or something, but for some reason, by morning, it's so cold, we find the joey and, and it, they're already deceased. I'm going to grab arms and hind legs, yep. so all we need you to do is just keep her head up and Chris is going to have a dig around in the pouch there. The cause of Meg's pain is quickly discovered. There it is. Yeah. So if you can see, I've got my finger underneath the, the lump there. It's 50 cent piece sized. Yep. All right, mate. Meg's got a dramatically enlarged mammary gland, so one of her little teats and the gland associated with it is a huge size. It's sore, it's hot, and it's a big concern because if that gland isn't functioning, she just can't support a young. It's also the most likely reason why her last two joeys did not survive. You're right, Meg. I'd be thinking either a pressure buildup yep. or a mastitis. 
Meg is in pain, you can see it right across her face. And from what women tell me, mastitis is one of those awful conditions that just feel terrible. A real throbbing, awful pain that just won't subside. So we're trying to help her through that whatever way we can. At the Australian Reptile Park, Chris has discovered that four-year-old Meg has a severe case of mastitis. Although I didn't want to have to put her through any of that, it's essential to get a good feel of that gland to see what's going on there. The bacterial infection of the milk gland is an extremely painful condition that affects many breastfeeding women. A bit of milk. Yep. The grieving Meg lost her joey only a week ago. It's usually a streptococcus. Yep. Gets into the into the joey, causes infections in them. Yep. They don't thrive because their whole system's focused okay. on trying to get rid of the infection. Yep. And, I mean, sadly, they, in the end, they, they die. All right, mate. And the treatment for this is going to revolve around some nice warm compresses. Yep. So essentially some, some swabs, warm water, and just massaging that gland. Okay. In, in behind the teeth there? Yeah, getting right in there. If we can break up that clot and just make it into liquid milk instead of the, the solid milk that it is, then we can get it flushing okay. out and, and right out the end of the teeth. The antibiotics should kick in soon to relieve Meg's pain. Once the mastitis is cured, Chris is hoping Meg will finally become a successful mum. Where she's comfy. She likes you. I don't think it's me. I think I'm, I'm all skinny and I'm like a tree. <laughs> <laughs> no, you got the you got the touch. She's four, so let's hope that she's just young and she's not sure what she's doing. And maybe next year with a little bit more maturity and you know that she can keep a hold of one and you know get one full term. Go. Lisa is taking a blood sample from the terrified Kiko. Perfect. It's oh, a good girl. Did you just want to cuddle? All right, let's check what her glucose is. She's hoping it will confirm her suspicion the puppy is suffering an extreme case of gastroenteritis. Oh, that's low. She's got a blood glucose of 1.4. With the blood sugar that low at the moment, that would cause signs of exactly what she's doing now, so really flat, lethargic. If it drops lower, if it drops below one, she's going to be at risk of seizures. Lisa's now administering glucose into Kiko's IV drip, but she must go very slowly. Puppies are such fragile little things. I mean, we are so much bigger than them. That she, she's 1.4 kilos, so we've got to be so careful with the amount of drugs we give her, the amount of fluids we give her. Everything has to be exact because there is so little room for error with these guys. Yeah, go ahead, mate. Yeah, mate, I'm out on the gay lagoon. It looks like Martha's caught the big bikes. Are oh, you kidding? You definitely Martha? Yeah, definitely Martha, mate. Right, I guess a couple of minutes, I'll grab Chris. Back at the reptile park, Chris's day just got more complicated. Well, it seems like Martha's been grabbed by another gator. She's one of our oldest, dearest gators, and she thinks she's a bit tougher than she is, so she's probably tried to fend off one of the big guys and they've just let her have it. Where's Chris? He's coming. 30-year-old Martha must be treated urgently before infection can set in. You know the drill, mate, if we go in for any yeah. reason... Yeah. Yeah, just stay cool and... We... I mean, you probably gonna need two at a time to get back in anyway to keep the boat stable. Yeah. Yeah. Calm yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely the yeah, better. Sure. Less splashing, just like a shark. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a shark. <laughs> it's, it's good. All right, let's do it. We need to get her very quickly and actually assess how severe the damage is. She could be losing blood. She could have internal injuries. We just don't know. To find Martha. Chris and keepers Tim and Obi must search the lagoon, home to more than 30 alligators, all capable of killing humans. See anything through there? Nah. You just can't see very far into this water, can you? Nah. When I was on land, I felt pretty comfortable. Out in the water, that's gator territory. This is going to be really tricky. You can see each of them's got their own little territory. Yeah. Oh, he's standing up. Defence pose there, see the tail out of the water, yeah. the back and the head just to... That's not happy, is it? Well, let's not go near that bloke. Ooh. This has suddenly got much more serious for little Kiko. 
Initially, I thought it was just a fairly non-specific gastroenteritis, and now she's got actually one of the horrible complications of gastro, which is low protein. Lisa's hoping a plasma transfusion will stop the puppy's fragile system from shutting down. Plasma is the clear part of the blood with the red cells taken out and it's got lots of protein in it and we give it to her through her IV catheter as a drip and hopefully that will increase the levels. Because um, Kiko is so small, she only needs 14 mils of plasma. Most dogs will need a whole bag of it and I have to just give her such a tiny amount because she's so little. There you go. Got your plasma. We've got so much tubing going on here. Um, basically, she's getting her fluids with her glucose and she's having a plasma transfusion. Um, we're not going to really know much until a few hours' time, and I'm really hoping that what we're doing makes a difference. Get out of there. <laughs> Martha? <laughs> No, we <laughs> wish. It'd be nice if it was, we wouldn't wish. it? Out on Alligator Lagoon, Chris and keepers Tim and Obi are searching for the badly injured Martha. The 30-year-old alligator was attacked by a young male. There she is, right there, you sitting joking? on the bottom. Jeez, Abe, it's a good spot. Well, she's right there. Sitting on the bottom, underneath the wall. Pull it tight, pull it tight. Yeah, got her. Let's get her in. Yeah, right, you jump on bank codes. Right. Gonna jump on behind me. One, two. Right. Could feel that power in her, even three of us on there, and with the head shake, you know, it's a bit of a, a tug of war, so you <laughs> don't appreciate how lucky that was. Jeez. I haven't got much pressure on her, so just watch out if she kicks. Yeah. So I've got a big gash oh, yeah. there, massive gash there. And you can see a bit of blood coming through there too. Can someone just watch out for the gators behind me? Yep. Right. Right. Not only has a gator picked on the oldest gator here, but they've also come in from behind and grabbed her pretty much when she wasn't looking and, and just got their jaws around the back half of her and obviously giving her a bit of a shake and a bit of a tear. Jeez, that's a big gash too. Definitely bites, hey? Yeah, they are. Yeah. She's in a pretty bad way. Hey, little mouse. Do you want a bit of chicken? A few hours later, and Kiko's plasma transfusion is starting to work. Somebody loves chicken, come here. This is exactly what I wanted. It's the most important thing for her to get better is for her to eat and keep it down. So fingers crossed that that stays in her tummy. It will be a slow recovery as Kiko's body heals. Concerned owners Mark and Nicole won't be taking their puppy home tonight. Hello, you look better. You look better. Still, still is quite unsure of her surroundings. And yeah, yeah no, she's. Oh, it's a, it's very scary for her to yeah. to be here and oh, and yeah. so. Oh, see. Oh. 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 oh, that was the last thing. <laughs> oh. I just had a heart attack. So did I. Oh. No flying off tables, huh? You don't need broken legs as well. Yeah. Oh, I guess I just start to think about when I've had gastro. Oh, no, it's revolting. <laughs> So, you just hang in there, baby girl. Aww. It's been a roller coaster for this little girl, and sadly, Kiko won't be going home until I'm certain that she's recovered from this. She just needs a little bit more, more time, time. And, and then you'll beat it, hey? Yeah. Good girl. Bye, <gasps> Piggy. Bye, little puppy. <laughs> <laughs> With Mark and Nicole gone, an anti-nausea injection is all too much for the dejected puppy. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Shh. Oh my goodness. Oh, you're really gonna hate me. No, oh, she's a beautiful old gator. What are they doing roughing up you, old girl, huh? Is there much flesh or is a bit of skin? That's, I mean, that's her, the base of her abdominal cavity there. Jeez. Let's give her a good nudge. First of all, you need to clean it up, make sure there's no chance of infection, and then concentrate on bringing those wound edges together. Because we've got the other added complication, the way that she's going to go back underwater, where there are bugs, there are bacteria that can actually get into the wound. Just going to cut a bit of stuff away from here so she might jump. Just watch that. 
What are you gonna do with that? No, no, no. It's a totally different beast than dealing with a dog or cat. This skin is just so thick. You really have to punch through with quite a bit of force. It's a difficult assignment, and Chris is finding it hard to concentrate with his back turned to 30 curious alligators. What was that? What was that? As soon as you slip for a second, they're onto it. At the Australian Reptile Park, Chris is under siege as he repairs the badly injured alligator, Martha. Occasionally, I do get this sense that I'm being looked at, not in a positive way, but more sort of a, in a appetising way. And I just know there are eyes behind me right now, and I'd, I'd almost rather not look and just concentrate on, um, on getting it done as soon as I can. I don't think I've ever stitched faster. The 25th and final stitch. So all done. It's a lot. They look good. Good girl, mate. A final shot of antibiotics, and Martha is ready to return to the lagoon. Right, wait, so, sorry. Looks good. Mm. Looks a little sore, but expected. It's the first stitching I've done on an alligator, so it seemed to go OK. We managed to use the needles we, well, for some reason, we never need to use in Bondi. But uh, pulled them out, dusted them off, and away they went. But they did a good job. Straight back to a hidey hole. Yeah. You won't see her for days. We don't normally have a day with so many events. I mean, we, we pretty infrequently get the vet up, so it's, um, it's been a big day. Little Kiko has fought a life-threatening case of gastroenteritis and finally won. She's just turned the corner. She's done a formed stool, which is excellent. There's been no more vomiting. She's been eating really well. And yeah, she's ready to go home. It's great. Look at that! Oh, hello, Bobby! I'm coming home! You want your pizza you taken with go, the vet? Go to your girls. <laughs> go to your saviour. <laughs> the evil vet, so I've been nobled. No, hey. it's just my thing. Yeah. Ready? She's a nice lady vet. Everyone who's going to play with her for the next week is going to get a little, little, <laughs> little hand rub first. <laughs> Bye. Thanks, guys. Thanks Bye. again. See ya. Hey, I've been in this for a long time, and I've never seen anything like this. Beer in there, or what's? No, Tinaneski because it's a bit different than all the others. Have a look at that. You tell me what it is. There's one last patient to see before Chris heads home. That is just abnormal, isn't it? You know what it is? Well, the nose like that's either going to be a platypus or an echidna. Yeah. But it's yeah, it's got to be an echidna. Yeah, it's an echidna, it is, isn't it? and it's bizarre, isn't it? Look, I've never seen anything like it. I, I didn't know if I was holding an alien when it first came <laughs> in. And... You've got legs, you've got claws, you've got a, almost a beak there. It's like four animals all combined into one weird little skin-covered package. So this is the key to try and stimulate him into wanting to have a drink. So if we can just... The tiny echidna will have to be hand-fed to survive. My initial response as a vet when you see him is to think, geez, he's not going to make it. But if there's one thing about these baby echidnas is they're tough. They do somehow find a way just to keep on going. While the battle is just beginning for the young echidna, two months on and there's good news for Meg. After treatment, her mastitis has cleared up and she's about to add to the park's koala population. We kept up the treatment just for a short while and the lump disappeared really quickly. So after that, we've had a really good mating with Herman. Um, so we believe her to be pregnant and it's ended up all good. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny Dusek from Bondi Vet. If you love our show and want to see more, plus some amazing content about pets and how to care for them, hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you on our next video.